Hi guys, it's Lauren. Welcome to my channel. So today is going to be really fun. We're going to do some shopping. We're going to talk about my Sephora VIB wish list and my recommendation list. So I wasn't necessarily going to post this video. I kind of had my list all ready to go, but this week I was just binging all these recommendation videos and I was getting my final list together and there were so many things that I just couldn't decide from. So I thought it would be fun if we went through my wish list together and you guys could help me narrow down some of these items. I have foundation on here. I can't, I've been trying to decide on a matte foundation. So hopefully you guys can help me pick one. And just some other things, lip products, that I was interested in and a few other things that I would love to hear from you guys if you guys had tried any of these items out. And after my wish list, we'll go through my recommendations. So I have 10 things. I didn't want to overwhelm you guys. There's a ton of things I could pick out here, but I just wanted to give you 10 things that I use and love every day. So yeah, I thought it'd be fun to let you guys know my tried and true favorites. So yeah, let's get to shopping. Okay, so we'll start with the things that are on my list, the things that I just can't narrow down. So the first thing on my list is a dry shampoo. So I have been on the hunt for a good non-aerosol dry shampoo for the longest time. So I really like when a dry shampoo doesn't have that sprayer because I feel like it can make my scalp wet and it takes some more time to dry down. I just feel like a simple powder is just such a time saver. So I was eyeing two. So the first one was from Briogeo, I feel like I never say their brand name right. I think it's Briogeo. Um, but they have this Scalp Revival Charcoal and Biotin Dry Shampoo. It has no sulfates and no silicones. So I like the fact that there's no sulfates in it because half the dry shampoos that are out there have sulfates which can dry out your hair even more. And this shampoo is non aerosol, so there's no sprayer. And all the reviews look really good. It looks like it absorbs into your hair really quickly. It doesn't leave a dry cast, or a dry cast, a white cast. And the other one I was eyeing was the Verb Dry Shampoo. I like the spout on this. I feel like it'd be easier with that pointed tip to get into those oily spots easier. And this is cheaper too, it's 16 bucks. So I would love to know if you guys have tried either of these or if there's another dry shampoo out there that you can recommend to me. So yeah, I might get one of those. And then next thing on my list, let me see. I, oh, I wanted one of the Too Faced Natural Nudes lipsticks. They have so many pretty colors in this line. So I'm between two colors. I just posted a poll on my Instagram stories to see what you guys thought. But I'm between the two colors, Birthday Suit and Stripped. They're both, of course, two pretty pinky nudes. I'm, you know me, I'm all about the pinky nudes. And I just can't decide between the two colors. Let me know if you guys have seen any swatches of these. I feel like they're hard to find swatches. I don't know why. I think it's Temptia. She has a great swatch website. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. But she's the only one that I've really seen with good swatches for this lipstick. So let me know if you guys have tried out any lipsticks from this line. They're definitely on my list. And then the next thing is, oh, the Viseart Trist Palette. This palette looks absolutely gorgeous. This eyeshadow palette is $49, and it looks like it has a good mix of shimmers and mattes. And I just thought the colors would be really pretty for summer. There's like a pretty pinky peach in here that looks really pretty. And then I'm all about the purples. There's some pretty purple tones in here. And there's nine shadows, and I just hear so many good things about Viseart palettes. I have yet to try any of their eyeshadows, so I'd love to know your experience. I heard they are really blendable and rich, so I might get that too. I feel like usually they're really expensive, so $49 for an eyeshadow palette from them isn't too bad. So yeah, I'm thinking about that. And next on my list is the Sun & Park Beauty Filter Cream Glow. So this will be a daytime moisturizer for me. Right now I'm using the Belief Aqua Bomb Moisturizer, which is amazing. It's such a good moisturizer, but I'm always looking to try out new things. So I might get that. It doesn't really have any anti-aging benefits in it, which is why I feel like it would be great for daytime. We don't have to worry about, you know, the vitamin C making your skin more sensitive or anything like that. But it says it helps with uneven skin tone, dullness, and uneven texture. It's lightly, quick absorbing, and it provides coverage that brightens the skin tone. So that really intrigues me, the fact that a cream could aid to some coverage in your skin tone. I don't I don't know how that's possible, but let me know if you guys have tried this. Maybe it has some like pore blurring effects or something to make your skin just look more even. So yeah, that cream really intrigued me and, and it's a great buy too. $32 for a moisturizer at Sephora is an amazing deal. So I think I might pick that up too. Next on my list is the Laura Mercier Concealer. Everybody is raving about this concealer right now. So I'm really interested in it. I heard it has really high coverage. It's seamless. It doesn't crease. 
So yeah, I, I might get that. I don't know if it can replace my shape tape, but yeah, I might want to try that out. Let me know if you guys have tried that out or what you've heard about that concealer. All right, and then last on my list is a matte foundation. I just want to pick up one, but I'm trying to narrow it down, so I would love your guys' help. I'm between the Cover FX Power Play Foundation, the Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation, and what was the other one? Oh, the Laura Mercier, I think it's called the Flawless Fusion Coverage Foundation. I hear great things. I hear that they're all really good for dry skin, and I'm super picky when it comes to a matte foundation. But I always use dewier foundations, and I'm trying to step out of that. So yeah, let me know if you guys have tried either of these three. I don't want a foundation that's going to accentuate any texture, that's not going to you know highlight any dry patches or anything like that. So yeah, I feel like matte foundation has been really hard for me to find. I really like the one by Milk Makeup. I have that one, but I find that that can look a little cakey, a little makeup-y. So I'm on the hunt for something that actually looks like skin. So let me know if you guys have tried either of those three. Okay, and then let's get into some of the things that I think you guys definitely should pick up. So one of my favorite new palettes is the Urban Decay Back Talk Palette. This has a gorgeous range of eyeshadows in here. I just love all the warm tones in here. You have some neutrals, some darker shades, and I love the shade Attitude. You have to check out this pigmentation. Like, it is crazy. I wish my camera would autofocus so you guys could see this better, but if you guys want to see a full review and swatch of this palette, I posted one on my channel about like four videos earlier, but it is so good. And then it has um, blushes on the one side with highlights, and the highlights are just so, so gorgeous. I just love the shades in here so much. I feel like it hasn't been getting great reviews, which I do not get. I guess people were saying a lot of the shadows weren't as, as pigmented as they hoped, but I don't know. I thought the pigmentation was, was great. I feel like they were really smooth. There's not a lot of fallout, and I just love the blush and highlight shades so much. So yeah, I definitely am a fan of this palette. All right, and then I have two foundations that I think everybody needs in their life. They're just so good. So the first one is the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation. If you have dry or even oily skin, I feel like this would work on both skin types. This coverage is so, so good. It's such high coverage with being lightweight. When you first apply this, I feel like it almost feels like concealer going on your face and you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to feel like really heavy, really makeup-y, but it doesn't. It feels lightweight and it's super, super long wearing. They say that it's 15 hours. I haven't really necessarily tested the wear time, but after a 12 hour shift, I feel like it still holds up well. My sunspots don't show through it. I'm wearing it today. I just love the finish of it so much. It's like a satin finish with a slight dew to it. The coverage is great. I just love this foundation. I couldn't recommend it more. I love this. And then the other one is the Naked Skin Foundation. This does not get enough love. I don't know why. I feel like this was really big when it first came out, but I don't know. Nobody talks about it anymore. But I feel like this foundation is so unique because it's so lightweight with high coverage. Do you notice the pattern? I feel like I really I like high coverage foundations with a lightweight feel, but this one even more so than the Smashbox. This goes on literally like water on your face. Maybe a little thicker than water, but it's so super lightweight and the pigmentation is insane. It covers everything and it gives a really pretty dewy finish. So yeah, this is a great foundation. And then I could go on forever about lip products, but I just want to recommend one to you guys. So this Natasha Denona lipstick in Warm Rose is such a gorgeous shade. I feel like everybody needs this in their collection. It's like a, a peachy, pinky nude, but I feel like it's such a universally flattering shade. It would look good on so many different skin tones. It's so gorgeous. Gorgeous. It has like a shiny finish to it. It actually is part of Natasha's shiny lipstick line and it just yeah it has like a slight glossy finish. It's just such a pretty nude shade. I love this. It's just like a your lips but better color. This is one of my favorites. I wear it all the time. It lives in my purse. So she's and she's so famous for her eyeshadows but I feel like her lipsticks don't get talked about enough. This is just such a great color and she has a lot of other great nudes in that line. So if you're a nude lip fan like I am definitely Definitely check out her line because it's it's great. All right, and then speaking of lips, I have to recommend to you guys this Bite Beauty lip mask. I know this is old news, everybody talks about it, but it is insane. It makes your lips so soft, so hydrated. First, when you apply this, it's kind of tacky, which I don't initially like the feel, but as it melts into your lips, oh my gosh, your lips are just so plump. It takes away any lines, any cracking. You can wear it overnight or even within like 10 minutes, it melts into your lips. So it's just a great, great lip mask. Yeah, I feel like everybody needs this. And it tastes amazing too. I feel like so many lip balms, 
they might taste good initially and then you taste that medicine taste but with this you could just lick your lips and just eat the balm right off your lips it just tastes amazing so yeah this is a great lip mask and then onto a primer this is another one that people don't rave about enough I don't know why but this is Too Faced Primed and Peachy Primer if you want a good matte pore blurring primer this is amazing it fills in all your pores it takes away any shine I'm wearing it today I usually put it like in between like the lines of my nose and I press it right into my pores right around my nose and in my t-zone right here and it just mattifies it takes away any shine but I have dry skin and it somehow still mattifies it keeps my skin hydrated so yeah just such such a great primer and it has a pinky peach tone to it so it's a brightening primer as well so yeah it's it's a really really great primer so yeah this definitely doesn't get talked about enough I feel like if you want something that's poor blurring this is a great great option and the last two items I want to recommend are skincare items so let's talk about the Drunk Elephant C Firma Day Serum I picked this up during the VIB sale back in November and I am so glad I did I feel like it has really made a difference in my skin it is like the only thing that I apply to my skin and I notice literally instant results from it makes your skin instantly glowing instantly Instantly firm, plump, hydrated. It's just such a nice product. It goes on, it's a serum, so it goes on really light and it just melts into your skin. I like this for the daytime. You can wear it underneath foundation, it doesn't pill. I really want to try other things from the Drunk Elephant line. I just love Tiffany Masterson's whole motto. She's all about clean skincare and she only she uses only clean ingredients and she always eliminates the suspicious six. So there are six things that she doesn't include in any of her skincare. So and if you guys are interested in that, check out my top toxic or bad ingredients in skincare. It's a great informative video if you're curious about the things you really should be avoiding. I just like that there's no guessing games with her skincare. You know you're getting good for your skin ingredients with any product you select. So yeah, I really I really like the C Firma Day Serum. Let me know if there's any other Drunk Elephant products that you guys have tried out. I really want to check out some more. I'm interested in the new eye serum that she has as well, but that might have to wait till the fall sale. So yeah, but this is a great, great brightening vitamin C serum. This is an awesome one. And last but not at least this is the glow recipe watermelon glow sleeping mask okay this is a product that you don't necessarily need in your life but if you want to treat yourself it is such a good sleeping mask it I posted a video about this as well because the results of this really surprised me I expected it to be a really moisturizing mask which you do get some moisture from it but the best thing about this it contains AHAs which are your glycolics and your lactic acids so it acts as a chemical peel so it exfoliates any dead skin cells and it reveals like brighter fresher younger looking skin and in the morning when I use this my skin just feels so baby soft so smooth I don't necessarily think it made a difference with the tone of my skin I feel like my dark spots are still just as dark from it so I don't think it gives your skin any like life-changing benefits but if you want a good exfoliating product that's gentle I think this is a great option so yeah definitely check out this watermelon sleeping mask so so, yeah that's it that's all my recommendations for you guys today I hope you guys enjoyed this let me know what you guys are picking up and please I would love to know any thoughts on the products that I showed to you in on my wish list let me know what I should eliminate let me know what I should pick up so yeah this was a really fun video thank you guys for shopping with me and I'll see you in my next one see you guys bye